Okay, so we're just going to go quickly through how to create a part of email template and some of the best practices involved in actually creating these. So underneath your marketing tab, you can hover over email templates and you get presented with quite a number of options depending upon what you're wanting to do. But for today, we're going to actually just create a new email template. So two hot actions down the bottom here for creating new list emails or an email template um, and then a number of other areas and we'll jump into a couple of these today. Um, I'm just going to use the hot action straight away. Alternatively, you can go to templates and click new email template, but this is a bit of a shortcut, so let's jump straight in and start building. Um, in terms of the name, uh, when you're creating email templates, really good idea to use naming conventions here because it will become much easier for you to navigate through email templates in the future. So in this case, we're going to go um, demo-template1. So if you're using maybe uh, email, you're creating emails for various purposes, make sure that you use demo. Obviously, when you're doing your naming conventions, try and go, um, you know, biggest to smallest. So I wouldn't put something like 01, uh, you know, 1st of February um, 2018, because it won't kind of sort them chronologically, uh, like alphabetically in the right way. Always try and start with your 2018, and then maybe your month will probably cover off a nice naming convention there. Of course, we have to choose a campaign, so we're going to select, uh, just for today, uh, an event one, event campaign. If you want to get more information on events, feel free to check out that video. And now we actually get to the nitty gritty of uh, what we're building this template for. So with uh, the first option you have here, which is email type, you have to at least uh, select text option. So remember, uh, creating a text option is obviously something that will help include deliverability of your email as well as obviously cater for those people that can't view HTML emails in some particularly old browsers or particularly um, incompatible, I don't know, just um, you generally Outlook can sometimes serve these up or slow internet connections. So always, um, you always have to have a text backup, but today we're looking at building a HTML and text email. So one thing about HTML is that obviously the HTML component is the part that comes with the, the bit of script that kind of executes to tell that they've opened the email. In text versions, you'll only know if they open the email if they actually interact with it by clicking a link. So the HTML one is a little bit more powerful in its functionality as well. Um, now the available for use part is a part that's super often overlooked by Pardot users, but I think is one of the most important bits to make sure that you actually customize. Um, you actually have four options and this overall actually will give you an idea of what email templates can be used for in the system. And just, um, you know, just as a general rule of thumb, try and eliminate all the options that you're not going to use them for. So for the purposes of today, I'm just going to leave only one ticked, but if you're making this email template available for people inside of Salesforce, tick the one-to-one -one emails. That'll uh, make it available uh, to be able to send out of Salesforce by, individually by rep, and you can install that button. Uh, you can see that how to do that through one of the uh, videos in terms of setting up the Salesforce and Pardot connector. You can use your email templates for list emails, which are those one-off uh, sends that you can do through Pardot, so taking a template and sending it to a list. Uh, once and once only or scheduling it for the future is what it was defined more or less as a, a list email. You also have the availability, availability of attaching your templates to auto responders which are on the back of assets normally part of your completion actions automations. So that goes down to like forms and landing pages and custom URLs. They all have the ability to attach a, a an automated email send off the back of uh, somebody interacting with them. So that's what kind of applies to autoresponder emails. And the last one is drip and engagement program emails, okay? So it might just say engagement program emails. I've got an older instance of Pardot here that's my demo instance. So this one here will make the template available inside of Engagement Studio specifically. So if, for example, you're actually just creating this email template as part of an Engagement Studio piece that you're building, try and limit down the other options just because it means that when you actually go to execute like a list email send that you don't have all the ones in, you know, to pick from that are part of like a drip or something. It just kind of makes an overall cleanliness of the system and bit of a, yeah, bit of a best practice there. So I'm just going to leave them all on for now because for future demos, but let's just save that off and move on to actually uh, setting up the template. Now when we click move on for building an email template, we automatically get presented with all these pre-made layouts. Now these are the ones that Pardot provide to you um, for use. The important thing to remember here is to actually scroll down to the bottom and have a look for these five here. 
Now these ones are the only ones that I recommend using because they're responsive. They look good on both mobile and web and let's face it, in today's day and age, most uh, like depending upon your industry, you will get people looking at it on their mobile phones or smartphones. Um, these are the ones that are gonna maintain their consistency and, and look good and, and I guess scale and whatnot. So would really recommend only using these five. Uh, if you click load more, I think a few more come up, but realistically, yeah, stick to the responsive ones, always the best practice and a good rule of thumb. Okay, so let's go with responsive two column basic. Um, actually, what, what you do here is just to give you an idea of, um, of a different type of uh, email template. We can, we can actually skip this overall layout process. We don't actually have to use one of these off the bat. We can skip applying that kind of stock standard HTML layout that you would normally see from marketing emails. And it'll actually kind of give you the email template you're creating in the form of a plain text email. So this is actually really good for creating emails for email campaigns to, to send out a part of that actually look like they're being sent from an individual. So if you've ever had a marketing uh, email sent to you after filling in a form or something like that that says, oh, hey, you know, I'd love to reach out to you, but you, you, um, but you might have been tricked by them in the past or you might want to incorporate them in a kind of a softer touch engagement. You can kind of sculpt it to make it look very similar to a, an email address that's sent straight out of an email client like you know G Gmail or whatnot. But of course the dead giveaway is always the unsubscribe link, okay? So that's the stock standard in any email automation platform. It's a legal requirement. So in future, if you do get an email that looks a little generic, but looks like it's always uh, you know, personally one-on-one -on -one written, just check for that little unsubscribe link. It's, a, it's the dead giveaway for these kind of automated emails. Um, but we'll come back to the use of these kind of emails in future, but just to, for today's demonstration, I'm just going to apply a layout and going to give you an idea of what that looks like when we do. So when we choose one of the layouts, we get that more, I guess, familiar look and feel of a HTML styled email. It's a little bit more professional in its use. Let's face it, it gets a, the ability to build like a nice brand image when you actually are producing one of these. Uh, it can be used for various different purposes, of course. Um, but let's actually have a look at the builder itself. So we are in the building stage. This top three, I guess, tabs at the top kind of describe what part of the process that we're in. So we're building, testing, and doing the sending settings. And inside of here, we have four sub uh, kind of fields, which are the editor, the HTML area, uh, a small preview area, and a text, uh, the text version. Okay, so we're in the main editor at the moment. Um, if we would like to edit a particular area, we'll have to go and engage with that, and we'll do that in just a second. But just to cover off on the right-hand side here, we also have the ability to edit the subject line, and we will also have the history tab, which we'll have a look in just a sec. So the first part, obviously you wanna start diving in and, and uh, building out your content inside your email. Okay, adjust this, uh, resize the bar on the right-hand side. This is the editor that is reflecting on the individual section that you've clicked. If I wanna say edit this section here, I just go ahead and click on it and we'll change over. So you can see here, each of these are the edited boxes that are part of the HTML template. Uh, if you hover over the repeatable section, you can actually see that you can maybe duplicate it, move it up or down. So if I click move up, it'll push it above this one, or again, move it down. Uh, I can remove it completely if I don't want to see it anymore. And I can also duplicate it to, um, to maybe give my, my bit more functionality of whatever, like boxes or, or types of content I would like to use. Right, so once that we've kind of formalized our framework, then we can start putting in some content. Um, so in this content editor section here on the right hand side, I do wanna highlight this cheeky little guy. It's definitely important to expand the toolbar to get the full suite of editing tools that we need to obviously edit our template. So some people forget to drop that down and they're like, okay, how can I line my text and whatnot? It's because it's being hidden. I don't know why that's not like default, but you know, we'll have to hand that over to Pardot support to explain. And go ahead and start, you know, doing whatever you want. A um, couple of things inside of the editor that are really powerful. So one of them is uh, the link tool. It looks like your stock standard little linking uh, chain. If you press down on that one, it'll give you the chance to link a URL. You can also anchor to particular other parts of the template, uh, include custom redirects, have a, an email link. So that's the one when you click on it, it opens up an email to respond to and you can customize the email address and message and body that will automatically generate when somebody clicks on this link. Um, you can 
put a file link to any of the files that you have inside of your Pardot instance, so maybe a PDF, whatnot. So if you're looking to uh, include like a PDF inside of your email template for somebody to download, uh, because Pardot doesn't support attachments, you'll have to put the file into Pardot's content area, uh, into the file section, and it will become available for here for you to link into your emails. And you also have the other things like your uh, landing pages and forms, and of course your unsubscribe links and email preference center links. And we'll look at those in a separate video. Um, other than that, you do have the ability to remove links by simply clicking the opposite button. Uh, you also have the ability to insert things like pictures. Okay, so we can go ahead and insert one here to give you what it looks like. Um, the drop down here will give me all the available images inside of my uh, inside of my instance, again, that are from inside the file section. I can upload files directly into here to just put them straight into the template. Uh, but what I can also do is actually get the URL of an image from the internet and put it here for it to automatically populate as well. Because uh, normally file storage limits inside of Pardot are pretty low. I would suggest trying to eliminate as much um, use of that with things like images, especially if they're high, um, if they're high quality images. Uh, normally, um, here I would suggest you know uh, sourcing URL images from URLs that are maybe hosted on CMS and stuff, and that might improve your load speed of your images as well. So I'll give you an idea of how that looks if I open up, say, Implementation Guru, my website, and go and have a look at a, uh, say, for instance, the logo at the top corner here. If I um, have a look at that image in a separate tab. I should be able to see there it is there. Uh, that's the URL, and if I take that, I can go ahead and you know use that as part of my template, like right there. Okay, it's all white, so it's probably not going to look too good, but hopefully that gives you a good example of what I'm talking about. Um, right, so the other things that you have available are obviously alignment tools, general formatting tools, um, special characters. Uh, you know, um, emojis, fonts, etc. Try and use the fonts that are available here. These are the most um, uh, the the most common. I guess they're web fonts, so they're most universal across browsers. So you, the failure rate of something like this loading is quite low. Um, unfortunately, custom fonts inside of emails are not generally very well received by some email clients. So I just I would suggest as best practice using the fonts that are available here. They're the most compatible across most devices. Um, and the other really cool thing that we have in here as well is uh, the first personalization thing that we're going to see, which is called a variable tag. Now, whatever you would like to call it, uh, some, some people call it mail merge fields or whatever, it's more or less a way for you to in, in, input a personalization into your email that's automatically going to populate depending upon who you send it to. Now, what you might have noticed as well is that you don't only have things like first name, last name, and all the standard fields on the prospect level, but you can also actually bring in stuff from the account level and from the user level as well. So if you know if it was sent from you know me, Trent Hall, I sent the email to somebody, I could just put my name in here. So I could say it was, you know, username would be my name and the first name would be the person that I'm sending it to. Um, and we can also source information, you know, for, like I said, from their account level as well. And there's a few system generated ones here, like current day, month, year, um, you know, uh, various other things. So just scroll through and have a look in your own time around what you might want to use inside of here. Um, obviously, the more of these you put in, of course, the more personalized your email is going to be. But uh, one thing I do want to highlight is that, say, for instance, you didn't have their first name, uh, by default, this would just disappear and basically it'd be left blank. So to give you a, a, a bit of a preview of what that looks like, I can go through to the preview section of the building stage. Um, and I have a, the ability to populate it as it's going to be sent to one of my users. So I can see here that Johnny Smith has a first name and last name, and there he is there. Cool, so it says John, and Trent Hall's the person who sent it, right? Whereas if I select somebody like Rod Stewart, I can see that they don't have a first name, so we can see here there's just a blank space. Um, that not, might not be optimal for you. So obviously if you send to a large population, you're missing small details of things like variable tags like company or industry, etc. You might want to put a default uh, fallback on there. And to do that, you have to step outside of the email builder and head over to administration and configure fields, pull up prospect fields. And here we can actually look at the prospect fields that are available to us. So in the case of say first name, if I click into that one there, 
I can see the default mail merge value is nothing. If I edit this and I change the default, uh, so set a default mail merge value, I can put something like there, okay, and save as default. So if we step back to the, uh, the template here and go back in the preview, we can kind of get an idea of um, there. So that might become useful if I was to make this look a little bit better and put something in like, hey, and instead of saying, hey, Rod, uh, or hey, Trent, it would say something like, hey there. Okay, so a good little backup option for you to, to, to use when creating a, an email template. And that's how you set those default fields. Um, now along the way, if you, if you might have noticed, if I'm editing these things, there isn't an undo button in this suite just up here. Uh, that's because it's obviously a cloud computing solution, it's not storing native copies onto your clipboard and things like that. So what you actually have is this little green fellow here and it will take you back to that history tab we saw before. Basically, Pardo, every time that you change something in your template, Pardo is creating a, a, a log of changes and it gives you the ability to recover something if you make a, an error. So you can go ahead and click there and click OK and it will restore the version that I wanted to come back to before. All right. So that's a really brief overview with the editor. The only way to kind of, I guess, get better with this is to use it more. Um, yeah, and uh, basically it's a WYSIWYG builder, so what you see is what you get. Um, basically this is what's going to load up into uh, people's browsers and whatnot. So go ahead and play around with that in your own time and have a feel for some of the, the cool things that you can do inside of the template. Now moving along, we have the HTML area in the building stage, which shows us the raw HTML. I have done a separate video about how to import uh, HTML templates from other sources into your Pardo instance. So if you want a bit more detailed information about this, jump into that video. But if you do have experience within HTML, this is where you can get a little bit more in depth and start to manipulate more on a technical level, some of the things that you might see throughout your template. Um, we've already had a quick look at this preview thing, uh, I guess preview, small preview over here. This allows us to kind of populate it with information uh, that we have inside of our system and it gives you a really quick preview to jump back and forwards between when you're in the editor. Um, and finally in the building stage, the text bit is the important one to sync across from the HTML. When you do so, it'll kind of come in a bit messy like this. So just please do the work and actually get in there and clean it all up because this actually may land in somebody's email inbox and you don't want it to have all these, uh, I guess, random spaces and things like that that come from the HTML when you sync it over. Um, a quick tip here, if you do actually go and create some edits in your HTML version, um, don't just come back to the text and click sync from HTML because you're kind of gonna have to come and get rid of all those uh, spaces again. Just go and you know make that edit again just in the text of whatever you changed in the in the editor section just to eliminate a bit of time and work there for you. Okay. Now um, once you've kind of progressed through all that then you're pretty much done with editing your template um, and when you create templates for different reasons and we'll look into that in the future uh, you may want to style them in different ways but this is kind of like your master template you're using throughout the system so try and make it as um, as I guess broad or as, or as narrow as possible for future use. Um, and then make sure that you really give it some good testing. So in the second stage here, the testing stage, we really wanna use the facilities here to make sure that this email is going to look good once it arrives inside people's inboxes. And we can do that through three different ways. The first way is by sending to a test list. So um, in the segmentations video, we've looked into how to create test lists inside of Pardot. So go ahead and have a look at that. This is realistically for the best possible real life example of what an email template is going to look like inside somebody's inbox because it's actually performing a send through Pardot as if it actually was sending to prospects, but obviously it's going to send it to whoever's on the internal test list. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very, very like, it's almost identical to a normal send out of Pardot. In fact, it also, if you go to reports, marketing assets, emails, and email tests, it even generates an actual report like it would if you actually did send an email out of Pardot. It's a really, really useful tool. Great way to, you know, add a bunch of internal people to this test list and fire it out to get their buy-in or get their approvals for content or whatever. A uh, great little tool to actually simulate pretty much identical to a normal send. The individual emails, so you can actually also just drop an email into this individual emails bit and click send to individual emails. This will actually send one HTML and one text version to the email that you put in here. But there is a really important thing to remember when performing this kind of test. 
and that is that the email sent to manually identified addresses will not populate variable tags or rewrite links to be tracked. So what does that mean? That basically means that if I was to put a bunch of variable tags into my email template, so if I was to put them in, say, this section here, uh, you know, blah, 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 okay? What that means is that when I get the email test sent to my inbox, it's gonna look exactly like this. It's not gonna populate these properly like you, it would if it was actually sent out of Pardot. So um, it doesn't necessarily give you the greatest, uh, I guess, view of what it will actually look like when it's sent, but it is really quick and easy to do, and, and it does send a text and a HTML version, so you get a chance to look at both of them. Now, if you are a Pardot, uh, I guess, pro user or above, so the middle, sorry, I know that the names have changed, but um, if you're in the middle edition and above with Pardot, you will have the option of rendering your emails, and this is powered by a Litmus, so fantastic and probably the most comprehensive email testing tool on the internet. Um, Litmus will generate basically a, a view of what your email will look like across a lot of browsers and you can see them underneath emails and tests. Um, once you click render, it'll take about five to 10 minutes to actually render that email across all of the different browsers. So it's a little slow, but this is kind of what it looks like. Um, it will render them across all of these uh, different ones. If it fails, it will also tell you. It will render a preview of the subject lines, which is always super important to see. And it will also give you a quick spam analysis as well. So it'll tell you if it's passed or failed across each of those different spam filters. And also give you some, um, give you some important information on how you can potentially improve your email to be able to optimize its deliverability to the, to the highest amount. Cool, so once you've done through, uh, progressed through the, sent, the testing stage, this is the part where you get to your uh, sending stage, okay, now the sending bit, remember we're setting up an email template here to be used amongst the system. This is not necessarily, we're not actually sending it here. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually specifying who this email is going to come from when it is sent in the future through any of those particular ways. So remember, autoresponder, one-to-one, -one, uh, gauge studio, or uh, list email. So the drop down here allows you to specify exactly who it's gonna come from. So I could click specific user and actually select myself here. That So for instance, this email template will actually be sent on behalf of Trent. So if this was attached as an autoresponder on behind, on behind an email, uh, sorry, a form, someone fills out the form and clicks submit and it's automatically sent to somebody, it'll come from me. You also have these other cool little options here called assigned user and account owner. So that will actually um, go and have a look who the assigned user is in the account owner and it will peer, uh, if you have connected your Salesforce instance, it will actually use the information from Salesforce as well and actually send on behalf of those. So automated emails on behalf of the assigned user can actually be quite effective, especially if they're styled in the plain text way that we saw at the beginning of this tutorial. Now you don't have to actually customize the reply to address at all. It is more or less a place if you would like it to be different than the sender. Um, normally I would say just don't touch this unless you want it to go come back to a different address than the one it's sent from, obviously. And it also gives you one last chance to actually edit the subject line as well. If you click Advanced Subject Composer, you get the ability to drop uh, variable tags into your subject line. There's also the emojis function as well if you want to put a few fun emojis in there. Um, you know, it's up for debate whether or not they, they actually damage your, your deliverability, but I'll leave that to you guys to decide. And we also have the ability to insert dynamic content into here as well. Um, I skimmed over that at the beginning, but you can, you can also put dynamic content into your email templates. And if you want more information about how to use dynamic content, please watch that video. It's really, really powerful stuff. And, but of course, it only comes with the middle edition of Pardot and above. So if you're on the lowest edition of Pardot, you might not see that function unless requested from your account executive. Um, once you've kind of customized that, I'm gonna go ahead and try and publish the template and it's actually going to say, whoa, 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 what if they don't have an assigned user yet? Remember, there can be people inside of Pardot that haven't actually been assigned to somebody yet. Um, so in this situation, you can add yourself a backup and put in something like a general specific user. One last thing I will say is that you can't basically put things in like 
uh, that you're not authorized to send on behalf of. So Pilot will check that the email domain that you're looking to send emails on behalf of is registered against your domain, and that's through your domain management. The, um, it, that's obviously part of the initial technical setup of Pilot. So for instance, I couldn't send it on behalf of atmat.com. Pilot won't let me do that. Um, so I can only send it on behalf of the people that are that my instance is authorized to send on behalf of. Okay, once you've published it all out, then you should have your email template ready to rock and roll. This is now published inside of the system. So go ahead and um, attach this to where you need to be. Remember, this is now part of your email templates. If you go through to marketing, emails and templates, you'll now see it as part of your published templates. It will move out of drafts. If you didn't want to publish it straight away, you can come back to it later and store it against the draft section. And this is where your working drafts will sit. This is where your published ones will sit. And it's now available to use in the system. Okay, you can attach it, like I said before, using list emails, one-to-ones, um, email engagement studios, and autoresponders. So good luck in creating your email templates and let us know if it was unclear on anything. Of course, like and subscribe and good luck sending your first emails out of Pardot.